Hey guys, another day on the Polara. A couple of hours up here. Um, want to get the uh, points changed over today. Uh, I want to find out what's going on beyond the back of the ignition switch as well, because uh, as you saw in the last video there, the um, when you turn the ignition, there was nothing, and all of a sudden you move the key and then it wants to start. So some it's not quite like that. I'll have a quick look behind the dash, see what's going on there. Um, also today we got some uh, nice new plates come through. Um, these came through from uh, mkdstudios.net. Smashing guy by the name of Mike, very, very helpful. Um, half the price of what I have been paying in the past. Um, and they are very good quality. I'll show you a bit more later. Um, so, yeah, let's crack on, shall we? Well, there's a good start for you straight away. I've just pulled out the ashtray. Not only was that yellow wire not connected, this black wire wasn't either. I've also just found another connector here. But I'm just finding that things are not connected up underneath this dash. It's like somebody's taken it apart and then just hashed it back together. So I'm kind of like not surprised that uh, the ignition is having fun and games, you know. Let's crack on. Well, we've got another couple of bits and bobs that aren't connected. Let's get me torch. You've got this one here that's not connected. And also this one here is not connected to anything. I really don't know what's going on. Oh well. Let's crack on. Right, ignition out. For those of you that don't know how to get out a Mopar ignition, certainly on the 60s stuff, this ring screws on the end. And what you got to do is undo that first. There's a few little teeth that you can get into. So that comes through the dash from the other side and then that screws onto the front of the dash holding that in place so that's how you get out the uh, ignition switch and then this one here is obviously the ignition barrel and what i find if you put the key in and then turn it i don't know don't even know if you have to turn it but providing you've got the key in this little tooth here there is a hole there that it locates into so literally you've just got to get a very small fine thin screwdriver pin whatever push that back in uh, and then pull the ignition barrel out it's a bit fiddly but uh, we'll get there yeah you can get there right i'm just gonna have a check out of this thing here so you see that tooth at the bottom that's missing if you like the lug that is what this bit goes into there that goes in and that's what turns the ignition that bit there that's what that locates into and then that's what obviously key turns that that turns the uh, ignition switch etc that's how it operates it's quite simple so and there's your thread around the top of the um, ignition barrel for that. Sort with George. Right, let's give this an inspect. So here we go. What I've done, giving that a clean, obviously, uh, clean this up. Uh, it actually works really well. There's a nice solid definitive click when you turn the key, etc. So what I've done here in the switch, I've just eased over the uh, connectors just I, i've just sort of like put a little bit of a kink uh in the uh, in the sides of them as you can see there definitely uh and that should hopefully get a better connection uh, you know what i mean so because i don't know why it was that that switch was messing around but we'll see right it's got all that lot back together and i think i've solved that anyway Nice definitive, red lights on, and a gentle. There you go. 
every single time. That's brilliant, that's that sussed. Sort with yours. As I said earlier, these number plates came from uh, mkdstudios.net. Gentleman by the name of Mike. I've put a link down below to his website. He doesn't just do number plates, he does uh, designs for mugs, t shirts, you name it. Um, he didn't actually have these Michigan plates uh, on his file, so what I did was um, I sent him a photograph uh, of this, of the Polara over in Michigan, uh, and what he done was zoomed in uh, and then came back with obviously the design uh, and put my registration on it as you can see. Uh, I asked him to put the December uh, sticker on there because uh, this came into the UK in December. So um, yeah, he can design basically whatever you like. If you were to shoot him over an email, I'm pretty sure he'd be able to help you out with whatever it was that you wanted. Yeah, head over to mkdstudios.net uh, and have a look. Um, yeah, it's worth it. The price is very good for these plates. They're aluminium. Solid, yeah, they're good aluminium and they've got the uh, uh, holes pre-drilled uh, obviously to go onto the car, so it um, saves you a lot of trouble. They're not embossed, they are just flat with the embossed uh, look to them and I think they're fabulous, absolutely brilliant. Well worth what I paid uh, and a real good price too. Check him out, he's worth it. Right, let's get these on shall we? There you go, sat in place, that looks nice. And the front as well. Looks rather smart. Yeah, brilliant. Sort with George. Right, I've just taken off the uh, distributor cap and it looks to me like that's actually a new cap. So that's good. That's nice and new contact points as well uh, new rotor on so I think what I'll do I'll just uh, double check the gap uh, looks like a new condenser as well so that's just saved me a job I'll, uh, <coughs> I'll just check the gap make sure it's alright should be 29 I believe uh, I'll check the gap and then um, yeah we'll know where we go I've just done the uh, plug gap and uh, he's just, pretty sure he's just on the open there. So that's, that's set nicely. That's nice. I'm happy with that. Like I say, they look like nice new points. Uh, rotor is new. Saves the uh, saves the button. That's new. So sort with George. Right, let's run her up. But before we do that, what I need to do is make sure that all this lot is tight. Now I did notice this uh, vacuum hose was almost off uh, last time. Now around this area here, I know mean, it's a bit dirty and whatever else, may have a bit of a leak going on. I'm just going to show you a bit of video from the last from the last uh, video that I uploaded because around here although the camera was over there from around here it looks like there's a bit of spray coming out when uh, when I rev it um, uh, so yeah as you can see um, just this just that little area there um, it was coming out from around here somewhere, so I just want to make sure that all this lot is tight. Because I might have a bit of a leak going on there. Don't know what that was. So, yeah, right back with you in a bit. Right, I've just managed probably just over a quarter of a turn uh, on the bolts through the carbon to the inlet manifold, so that obviously wasn't tight enough. And uh, the screws on the top plate. Uh, they've had a, a little tweak, a little tighten up, uh, all six of them. Um, I've also managed to just give that a quick turn 
Uh, I've given the carb a quick clean up around the front here, getting rid of all the rubbish. Um, right, let's uh, give her a start up and, and, and see what we get. Obviously, what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to concentrate on this area here because that's what I want to see. I think by tightening all that lot up this worked, that'll seal, that'll be fine. <clears throat> and as you can see with the radiator, we just had the slightest little drip down the bottom there, so I think that's now going to be fine as well. So uh, yeah, I've been running this up for quite a while now, and uh, I haven't lost any water. So, well, the slightest of a, of a drip, you know. Nothing to write home about, let's put it that way, so I'm happy with that, That'll be, that's fine. Right, sort with George, job done, let's go home.